Daniel Gardner, Risk, The Science and Politics of Fear In the book, Risk, The Science and Politics of Fear, author Daniel Gardner delves deep into humanity's understanding and perception of risk. From the evolution of our brains to the way our society is constantly bombarded by frightening stories in the media, Gardner examines the many factors that contribute to the culture of fear that engulfs the modern world. In a time when so many aspects of our lives are supposedly under threat, the book demystifies the risk society and challenges our inherent perceptions of danger, urging us to see through the veil of fearmongering tactics used by the media, politics, and various industries. The Exaggeration of Risk In a world where we are inundated with news about looming threats such as climate change, global epidemics and terrorism, Ulrich Beck's concept of risk society has only grown more relevant. We have become increasingly fearful of technological advancements, with sensationalized stories of cancer, terrorism, obesity, and gluten intolerance dominating our media. However, most of these reports are exaggerated, if not outright false. For instance, a study conducted by the Oxford University found that only 0.7% of women knew that breast cancer is most common among women over the age of 80. Instead of indulging in these scare tactics, we should direct our attention to more actual risks such as the flu, which claims 36,000 American lives annually. In this thought-provoking book, Beck implores us to take a more rational approach to the fear-mongering that characterizes modern society. Our outdated brain hardware. Our brains have remained essentially the same for 100,000 years, despite the dramatic changes in our environment. Our outdated hardware doesn't necessarily operate effectively when holding software designed to navigate modern risks. This is because our brains evolved in the Stone Age, before agriculture and cities. For instance, we still fear snakes causing an innate fear that has nothing to do with the actual risks we face today, such as car accidents. This is a result of ancestral survival and genetic evolution. Additionally, the law of similarity also affects how we perceive our environment, as we think things are similar just because they look alike. Our brains, being ancient, are still adapting to the complexities of modern life, making concepts like risk perception more complicated to manage. The two sides of our brain. The human brain operates through two different systems, the intuitive system 1 and the rational system 2. Nobel Prize winner, Daniel Kahneman, explains how these systems work. System 1 runs unconsciously and is quick to react based on a few simple rules. This system is not highly accurate and doesn't adapt well to new situations. System 2, on the other hand, runs on conscious thought and is slower. It requires education and careful thinking to work effectively. However, System 2 is not without flaws either. Despite being slower, it's essential for logical thinking, especially in situations where System 1 fails. The example given is of a math problem where most people tend to provide an intuitive but wrong answer due to the influence of System 1. The book delves into how these two systems work and influence our decision-making abilities. Ultimately, the author sheds light on how one can learn to tame their gut reactions and become more in control of their decision-making process. Avoiding the traps of our intuition Our intuition can lead us astray when we rely on cognitive shortcuts called heuristics. Two such laws that govern our gut reactions are the rule of typical things and the example rule. The former makes us choose the most typical option based on our biases, even if that choice is illogical. For instance, in a famous case study, 85% of students chose the wrong answer when asked which profession Linda, a vocal feminist with a philosophy degree, was more likely to have, that she is a bank teller, or a bank teller and a feminist. The example rule makes us believe that the likelihood of an event is entirely dependent on how easily we can recall examples of similar events, even if that is contrary to the evidence presented. For example, People buy earthquake insurance immediately after an earthquake occurs, even though the probability of another earthquake is lowest soon after one occurs. By being aware of these laws of heuristics, we can make more informed decisions. 
Unveiling the Power of Anecdotal Evidence Our belief in anecdotal evidence is unfounded, yet powerful. In 1994, the media perpetuated the cancer-causing myth of silicone breast implants despite a lack of scientific evidence. Dow Corning faced massive lawsuits and ultimately bankruptcy. Anecdotal evidence is potent because we struggle with numbers and probability. Humans' innate mathematical abilities are limited, and we are easily swayed by stories. While dolphins can do basic addition, we aren't much better at math than they are. Shockingly, humans trust safety equipment more if they're told it saves 85% of 150 lives than if it saves just 150 lives. In short, we must be mindful of the influence of anecdotes, especially when evaluating complex scientific claims. The Manipulation of Fear The pharmaceutical industry and politicians use fear to manipulate us, and our faulty judgments can have serious consequences. Disease mongering is a tactic used by pharmaceutical companies to convince customers that something is wrong with them, and it can be cured with a pill. This is why pharmaceutical companies spend so much money on marketing, they earn more by convincing people they're sick. GlaxoSmithKline's plan to sell their product Lotronex in Australia is an example of this. The plan encouraged doctors to link common stomach problems to irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS, and Lotronex was found to cause serious, and even fatal, health problems. Politicians also appeal to our emotions rather than presenting us with factual information. 79% of campaign ads were based on emotional appeal, and nearly half involved fear. The U.S. government played on people's fears of weapons of mass destruction to drum up support for the Iraq War, even though those fears ended up being unfounded. It's time we recognize the manipulation of fear and protect ourselves from its consequences. Fear-mongering in the media The media's obsession with crime and fear-mongering results in a constant state of fear for society. Even when government data reveals a significant decrease in crimes like domestic violence, it goes unreported in the media. The media exaggerates rare crimes like pedophilia, causing unnecessary panic in parents and society. Studies show that the chances of a child being kidnapped by a pedophile are extremely low, and we should be more afraid of common dangers like swimming pools. Society needs to be aware of the media's example rule and not fall prey to fear-mongering. The Illusion of Terrorism Terrorism is an ongoing obsession that continues to stir fear in people's hearts. Yet, this fear is exaggerated as terrorist attacks have decreased over the years. The example rule played a significant role in increasing fear after the 9-11 attacks. People gradually started to use their heads instead of their gut instinct, leading to a reduction in fear. Despite this reduction, many continue to be wary of terrorism, with an increase in worry for family members falling victim to attacks. However, the risk of dying from a terrorist attack is lower than that of being hit by a car. In comparison, lack of health insurance is responsible for thousands of deaths annually. Terrorism certainly is terrible but has little impact on most people's lives. Best Days Ever Despite the fear-mongering, humanity is currently experiencing the healthiest and wealthiest phase in history. The World Health Organization predicts increased life expectancy and lower child mortality rates in every region. The percentage of malnourished people in developing countries has decreased drastically, with Niger's 2003 Human Development Index score being 17% higher than its 1975 score. Chad and Mali's scores have improved by 22% and 31%, respectively. With access to better healthcare and public resources, people are living longer than ever before. Robert Fogel, an economic historian, claims that half of current college students will live beyond a century. In 1950, the U.S. life expectancy average was 68, by the end of the century, it was 78. Despite our tendency to misinterpret risk, we should remember that humanity is experiencing its prime. Understanding our vulnerability to fearmongering is critical in breaking free from the manipulative tactics used in politics, media, and industries like pharmaceuticals. 
Despite the fear that surrounds us, the truth is that we live in the safest, healthiest, and wealthiest society in human history. By developing a more balanced, informed, and rational understanding of real versus perceived threats, we can make better decisions and put our fears into context. Risk, the science and politics of fear, highlights the importance of acknowledging our limitations in risk perception, helping us see the world through a more accurate lens and overcome the anxious narratives that cloud our judgment.